Chapter 22, part 8, and it most assuredly the last part. Picking back up on Jesus changing the prophecy. That's by his very lips. He's the one. Luke says, he says this to them. Now, he didn't write the Gospels. You know, we don't even get the first Gospel, Gospel of Mark, until 40 years after his death. And it's filled with quotes and sermons, Sermon on the Mount, different events. Uh, 40 years after his death. Well, whoever wrote that Gospel, nobody thinks it was Mark, Matthew, Luke, or... Uh, that, that, that's the Apocrypha and Pseudopigrapha. Books attributed to other people or hidden books. They just, whoever wrote it attributed it to Mark, for instance. This is where I left off. Jesus says all things written by the prophets concerning himself are accomplished by his writing and asking to Jerusalem to be delivered to the Gentiles mocked, scourged, put to death, and rise on the third day. No prophet of the Hebrew Bible wrote this. None. Or any other holy scriptures that, that didn't get canonized, if there is such a thing. This is not what Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 10 says. It is not written by the prophets in any book of the Holy Scriptures. It cannot have anything to do with Isaiah 53 and the covenant with God to receive long life and make the many righteous by his knowledge. Okay, the Hebrew Bible, Christian Old Testament, looks like I'm doing the last two paragraphs. Great Skull of Isaiah, Apocrypha, and the pseudopigrapha are all the possible scriptures that Jesus could be referencing and not one book mentions. A son of man, God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, son of God, a man who is God, or any man to be delivered to the Gentiles, mocked, scourged, and put to death, a man who dies for the sins of other men, any man who is to rise from the dead on the third day, or a man who is sacrificed or made to sacrifice himself by God. Another example is uh, Jesus' use of the prophecy of Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. This is where God says, I'm sending my messenger before me to clear the way, and I shall return to my temple suddenly. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way, which we, we covered in, I, I think, 5310. He, <laughs> let me just read it. Okay, it's the, his use of Malachi 3 1 to describe his cousin, John the Baptist, as being Elijah who historically and by the scripture could not be him. The messenger is Elijah. He's the only, he's the only man mentioned in chapter uh, 3 of Malachi. He's the messenger. God had his prophet Jeremiah write the new covenant with sin forgiveness for a time to come in Jeremiah 31. Had his prophet Isaiah... Describe Elijah, who I also, I'm all for, in Isaiah 53, and have his prophet Malachi write that the angel of the covenant you desire is already coming, and the messenger of the covenant is being sent to clear the way for the Lord, who is Elijah. Jesus uses Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, to describe his cousin, John the Baptist, to be Elijah, but leaves out the angel of the covenant. He didn't mention it. He uses the first two parts of that verse, but not the part where God says, the angel of the covenant you desire, sin forgiveness, is already on the way. Why do you think he left that out? Because if John the Baptist is Elijah, 
the covenant's there. And there's nobody sins to die for. All the Jewish people in the time of Jesus would have been sin free. If John the Baptist is, 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 is Elijah. That's why the angel leaves early, by the way. It, it, it was for me, too. There are two specific covenants to come in the day of the Lord. The new covenant with sin forgiveness must come with the angel of the covenant that you desire. For the reason the covenant of friendship comes with God's servant, David. Meshach, never be me. Jesus said, this is he. Talking of John the Baptist. Of whom it is written. No, it's not. Behold, oh, of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall pay, prepare the way before thee. By thee, I assume he means himself. I don't, Christianity thinks he is God. Jesus is saying that John was clearing the way for Jesus as the Lord, as the Son of God or God incarnate, and a renowned teacher of the scripture at synagogues as a young boy, Jesus knew that Jesus, the Jewish people were without sin if John was Elijah. And in the book of Hebrews, he confirms that he, what he says is, and it's false, he says in the book written of me, and there's no such book, that uh, God prepared his body for human sacrifice, no longer wanting animals for sin. So, he said it. Jesus knew the Jewish people without sin if John was Elijah. That is why he did not mention the angel of the covenant. More deceit. He cannot die for the sins of the Jewish people if they are sin free. God forgives by his written word. He did it for the exiles, 13 tribes. And now he's doing it for the Roman dispersal, the diaspora. Not human sacrifice. I don't know what the young man. The time to come of the new covenant is when the land blooms again and when the city, Jerusalem, shall be rebuilt as it is today for the Lord's return. A time to come when the Jewish people are never uprooted and overthrown again. There's a caveat to that. So long as the third temple's built on Mount Zion. Not the temple now. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Too small, tainted with Islam, and controlled by Jordan. Certainly, we can find a big tract of land on Mount Zion. Between 68 and 70 common era, the Jewish people were revolted against Rome four times and were defeated, murdered, crucified, and forced to flee the lands of Abraham, beginning the diaspora, the Roman dispersal. The Jewish people were overthrown and uprooted after the death of John the Baptist. The scripture says that's not supposed to happen. Not only that, God is in his temple in the times of Jesus. Malachi 3 doesn't even come into effect. C. Last paragraph. The time is coming, declares to the Lord, when the city shall be rebuilt for the Lord from the tower of Hanel to the corner gate, and the measuring line shall go straight out to the Garib Hill and then turn toward Goa. And the entire valley of the corpses and ashes and all the fields as far as the Wadi Kidron and the corner of the horse gate on the east shall be holy to the Lord. They shall never again be uprooted or overthrown. Jeremiah 31 verses 38 through 40. Guy was the title lawyer. This is the kind of description you just do this. Oh my. You can actually find most of these places, but the fact is, Jerusalem is so much larger today than it was in antiquity. According to God Himself, 
And uh, if it had to be rebuilt, that must be true. That uh, it encompasses all these land markers. Okay, then comes chapter 23, which I've already done. They're very good. This is on Tovia Singer and Outreach Judaism. 24 is on Jews for Judaism and their commentary that Isaiah 53 is, is Israel. All of the people of Israel gathered as one name. Uh, and Tovia does the same thing, but they have different commentary to support that. And the support is so weak. It, it's borderline an absurdity. I really question if they believe it and, and why they did it. Maybe as anti-missionaries, they thought it's a better way to fight the Christians saying it was Jesus. I think I've covered it a lot better than anybody. Well, God has. So anyway, we're going to be moving to uh, chapter 25. I'm trying to get it, it helps me if at the end of the video, and that's it for 22, uh, I, I give the title for the next chapter. I tend to forget. You want me to go ahead and shut it up? I can find this. I'm scrolling through <laughs> chapter 24. But that's basically it. If you're not interested in the name of chapter 25 of, uh, yeah, chapter 25, then, you know, go ahead and turn the video on if you're still here. A lot of people don't stay long. I think mostly those are Christians. I've had Christians follow me. I'm like, <laughs> have y'all actually read anything I say about Christianity? Ah, it's the resurrection of the dead. Another false teaching. It's got to be straightened up. Thank you for watching. Tell all your friends. Tell your rabbis. They're dismissed.